Hello YouTubers, and today I'm going to be doing a review again, so hooray. Uh, so yeah, I'm going to be reviewing the very, very recently released, the 10th Doctor Adventures Volume 3, released by Big Finish this week in fact, and I've had a chance to listen to all three stories, so yeah, without further ado, I'm going to review them. Yeah. So we start off with No Place, and to be honest, this was the story that I was looking forward to the most out of it, because we had the return of Bernard Cribbins. Yay! And actually, No Place is actually a pretty decent uh, sort of ghost story sort of thing, where... And it's kind of based a bit around, um, if you remember, that unaired episode or the unmade episode that was supposed to be uh, what Midnight was supposed to originally be where basically it's mostly haunted but Doctor Who this is essentially that now it's written by uh, James Goss who be honest with his stories it kind most of the stuff I've listened to from him that was being written by him kind of uh, feels like a sort of mixed bag where, yeah, that was pretty decent, though it's never gone into anything that I would consider great or amazing. And to be honest, while I did really enjoy this story, it's one of those stories when you listen to it, it's it's all revolving around the mis a mystery, like why are these weird and, you know, sort of supernatural things and that happening at this house? And then once you find out in literally the last couple of minutes, it's kind of a bit... Oh. So, that's it. Great. And yeah, it has one of those things where, to be honest, it's a lot like New Who and the fact that it literally ends and just wraps everything up incredibly quickly in the last five minutes, if not that, it's probably even less than that, to be honest, and the ending, to be honest, I was pretty disappointed with the ending, and the ending kind of ruined it for me, to be honest, I mean, for a lot of the run time, it was, you know, interesting and sort of creepy of, uh, ooh, what is happening, uh, why is this happening, and then when you find out, it's just like, uh and it, to be honest, it's not very well explained. I'm trying to keep this review, you know, as spoiler-free as possible, but I've got to see, although I did enjoy it, if I was to listen to it again, to be honest, it's kind of spoiled because you know why everything's happening. And it's not one of those things where, oh, now I know why this is happening. It's just one of those things that that's happening because of this. And it kind of loses its creep back factor you know it's the same with you know sort of any horror the less you know the more interesting and the more creepy it is but when you know the more you know about something the less scary it is and that's what kind of ruins this one for you know repeat listenings to it so yeah but to be honest it was enjoyable i won't deny it it was a really enjoyable uh story and to be honest, I did really enjoy it, and to be honest, I couldn't see anything more on that. The second story, One Mile Down, is where we get the return of the Jadoon. Sort of. Although the Jadoon are definitely in this story, and they do play a part in this story, it's, they're barely in it. If you were hoping for a good, solid Jadoon story, then I'm afraid that this is not it. In fact... This is a story about fish people, and yeah, fish people ha having this sort of holiday resort, and this big evil corporation is mistreating them, and basically, yeah, that, to be honest, if you think you know where it's going with this, you're right, it is, and to be honest, it is a really obvious by-the-books story. I just, I just, not a fan of this one. Uh, to be honest, it's just so sort of samey. It's nothing we haven't heard before. And the writer Jenny D. Co. 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 Co
colon colund I don't know, I've never heard any other stories written by them. And if this one's anything to go by, this is a really by-the-books one. I mean, the performances are really enjoyable. That's something I should actually see. Uh, everyone, you know, gives it their all. David Tennant and Catherine Tate are fantastic in all three stories. Uh, yeah, and Bernard Cribbings is excellent as ever in um, the No Place. <coughs> Excuse me. And the rest of the cast do a pretty decent job as well. But other than that, it's just a really by the books and by the numbers, you know, story. And to be honest, it feels similar to uh, a previous uh, Tenth Doctor Adventures um, in the first box set, Time Reaver. It has some, some similarities to that, but to be honest, it is a pretty much by the books story of basically people rising up um, against the evil corporation and questioning are we going too far but yeah be honest I mean you could say I'm spoiling this here but no and also oh by the way there's another space racist in that one yeah to be fair to him though um to be fair, well, to big finish, this guy is racist to anything that isn't human. In a way, you could say he's essentially a human Dalek. Dun dun dun. But he's not. Yeah. Well, it's. I don't know. It, it, it feels a bit odd, but to be honest, it feels a lot more realistic of a space racist. Than it does of the space racist we caught in series 11. So yeah. But be honest. You didn't need him in this. He's literally. His only character trait was. To be a, a racist. Towards the fish people. And, and robots. And any other non-human life. So. Yeah he was not necessary to the plot. Whatsoever but. He's there nonetheless. Yay. And finally the third and final story. The Creeping Death by Roy Gill. And to be honest this story. I was kind of like. Mm, what could this one be. And. again, This one I have mixed feelings about again. Um, to be honest. It does have a pretty good opening to it. But. Um, the second half. Kind of falls a bit. Flat. This one is about bugs and insects, and it's about uh, the smog in London in 1952 that killed a lot of people. But uh, this time it's aliens in this smog. And to be honest, I couldn't help feeling that this sort of thing feels a lot similar to the Vasco Nevada in a way, because these bugs are teeny tiny and they form a swarm. And this swarm you know, kills humans, but also it can animate a human corpse and use their vocal cords in order to talk, and then I was just getting a lot of vibes of this. Is, these monsters are essentially a rip-off of the Vash Generada. And this story is also getting a release on vinyl. Yeah, it's going to be exclusive uh, to Asgard, and it's coming out on the 24th of May, so... Yeah, I mean, it might already be out by the time you're listening to this review, but uh, out of the three stories that they could have released on that, to be honest, I would have preferred No Place. So I was saying, I think that one could have been a little bit more marketable as well, considering you've got Wilf, Bernard Cribbings, you know, nice marketable material there, and it's a nice little ghost story. That's also something I would like to say. The covers for all three stories... You know, the artwork is pretty lazy. Like, very, very lazy, to be honest. Like, to be honest, this is something that you see in a lot of Doctor Who, you know, audio fan series ones. In fact, to be honest, if I was given the assets that they were, I would probably be able to mock up something 
if not identical, extremely similar to it. I mean, the best one is the one that they use for the front cover. And it seems like, you know, that is the only one they bother putting any effort into. And it, it still isn't Greek. So that was something a little bit disappointing. I haven't received uh, my copy of the box set in the post yet, though it was dispatched yesterday and I will be unboxing it. Uh, so yeah, it would be nice if they put a little bit more effort into the artwork considering this box set is not cheap. Oh no, since it's a limited edition box set, well, the limited edition one for the CD is £35, which is a lot, and it, it, though to be fair it is a 5 disc set, though to be honest, only 3 of those discs is a story, one is behind the scenes, and the other is David Tennant at Big Finish, which to be honest is just exactly as it sounds, and eh... I mean, I can see why they continue to do the sign they've done with the other two band they do sell. Though the second box set, clearly, Volume 2 of the 10th Doctor Adventures, despite getting Rose back and thinking, yeah, this is nice and marketable, clearly, you know, they were a bit off with their audience because most of their audience are Classic Who veterans like myself. So, yeah, the second volume clearly didn't sell as well because... That one you can still buy, whereas the 10th Doctor Adventures Volume 1, they had to release a standard edition because the regular version sold out. And to be honest, I think it's one of the only big finish, you know, limited edition box sets that has actually sold out. I don't know if the class box sets physical releases have sold out or not, but yeah. And it is sad the way big finish are going with their slowing down their physical media releases which is a shame but yeah overall let's get on to my thoughts what did i think of the 10th doctor adventures volume 3 and i did enjoy it and i will say it is definitely better than volume 2 volume 2 to be honest was just a disappointment to me and while this box set, to be honest, doesn't really offer much new, it is enjoyable for the ride. I will say, though, if you're not bothered about the CDs, then yeah, definitely go for the download and save yourself. I believe it's a tenner you'd save, so yeah, if you're just curious about it, then go for the download. Or wait for maybe if it comes out um, as a regular version, then get that one, that'll be cheaper. But other than that... Would I say it's better than Volume 1? I don't know. I would say this one is on par with their Volume 1, to be honest, in terms of stories. I did enjoy this uh, one, but it's not going to be a one I'm desperately going back to. I might listen to No Place again, just because it was enjoyable while it lasted, even though I know all the turns that it's going to pull on it. I did, you know, enjoy that one the most out of them. And who knows, maybe that might get a vinyl release later on. And if it does, then I will buy it. Even though if the artwork on it is a bit, well, basic, to say the least. But yeah, overall, that's my thoughts on it. Let me know if you've uh, bought it and listened to it. And let me know what you think about it in general. To be honest, out of all the box sets that are coming out for Big Finish this year, uh, this was the one that was a one that I was going to buy was probably the least excited about to be honest the one i'm most excited about is the further adventures of lucy miller but we'll see how that one turns out in a couple of months time when it's released but anyway let me know what you think and uh that's it for this review and i'll see you next time Bye bye